All right. Good afternoon for those of you on the East Coast. Good morning to anybody in the Midwest or on the West Coast. Um, and good afternoon to anybody possibly joining us from Europe. Uh, rare, but we've had that happen in the past. Uh, my name is Jeff Gavio. I'm the Director of Marketing here at 3HTI, and I just want to thank all of you for joining our webinar uh, focusing on model-based definition in CREO today. Uh, we're joined by Emily Pinto. Emily is a process engineer at PTC. She's our resident expert on model-based definition for today. So model-based definition, as you may or may not know, it's an approach to creating models that effectively contains all data needed to define a product within that model um, that enables you to use this model further downstream or across your organization by suppliers, partners, other business units outside of engineering, whether it's the manufacturing department operations. Um, it's a very useful tool uh, that's available in Korea. We'll give it another minute or two here as people start to filter in, and then I'll let Emily uh, take, take it away with her presentation today. It's going to be about a 30 minute uh, overview and demonstration of model based definition. Um, if any of the attendees have questions or comments, um, you please use the raise hand feature of the chat. You can just drop your question into the chat and Emily or myself will address it. And uh, if you have any questions at the end that come to you later, we will save a, a minute or two at the end of the presentation for those questions. So with that, I'll let Emily take it away. Thank you, Emily. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, so my name is Emily Pinto. I work with PTC in our virtual center of excellence, and I'm excited to talk about model based definition today. Um, so these two are grouped together. You'll see uh, if you can see my PowerPoint. It's model-based definition and geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. And you don't need one to do the other, but uh, we do like to talk about both just in our model-based definition because it's part of the same tool set, right? If, and um, if you're starting to, to use model-based definition, it, you know you might want to consider also using geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. Um, but you don't need one to do the other. Uh, they just happen to be in the same kind of a, a toolbar. So we're going we're gonna to go over both. Um, so model-based definition is one of, those, uh, one of those things that, you know, coming out of school as an engineer, I thought, oh, surely everybody does this now these days. And, uh, you know, I was a little bit surprised to find out that nobody really... Um, has completely switched over to model-based definition. Or, uh, well, I should say the industry as a whole hasn't completely switched over there. Uh, and so I'm, I love talking to customers and, and working with, with companies who want to understand maybe how to move towards that because it's definitely right the, the documentation of the future. Um, and, and there are a lot of challenges with 2D drawings. It is just a little bit of, I think, habit and uh, you know what people know is why 2D drawings are still used um, because people know how to uh, understand them and interpret them. But the thing about 2D drawings is that they're very costly and they're often very incomplete, which makes documentation really not very useful at all um, because you have so much information to try to get down on these models and the lines and, and cut sections are hard to understand exactly what you're looking at. So if you've been doing it for 30 years and you're used to drawings, then, uh, you know, maybe uh, you know, they don't see such a, a need for switching to model based definition. But as a new engineer, this is going to take a long time to understand and, and takes years in the industry to really understand what you're looking at and, and know where to go for what information. So the, this is just one of the challenges. Uh, and you can tell from this drawing, this is not. Um, you know, uncommon to have so much going on and, and trying to figure out what you're looking at. Very visually con visually challenging for the consumer. And if you're calling out individual parts or process documents, you know, you have to cross reference with lists and tables. And it can be hard to, to see as a whole picture exactly what you need to know and, and what information you're looking for. So the future, right? We said, okay, great. Now we have all these 3D CAD models. Um, you know, no longer doing 2D drafting for all of the the modeling. Let's put all of these um, definitions and, and all of these details in the 3D model. Uh, but the the thing about it is that throwing all of these details onto a single model that 
they're all visible at once. And it can be also very visually challenging. There's a lot going on. Um, so it, it wasn't quite the solution that people thought that it was, but what we found out is it's all in the details. So model-based definition has the ability to be so impactful because it's so easy to understand. It's immediately obvious to the user what they need to know, but you have to put a little bit of thought, just like you would in a drawing, put a little bit of thought into what's going to be visible in which orientation or which view. Um, so it's really merging the idea of 2D drawings and taking a lot of the uh, practices and habits that you have uh, from 2D and using them in 3D. And Creo makes that so easy to do is to, to take advantage of the benefits of 3D models, as well as the benefits and the habits of 2D models that people are used to. Uh, the other thing is that standards are always evolving and competing. And so uh, you don't have to keep up with uh, whether it's ASME or ISO standards that change and evolve. You need to make sure that they work and you need to keep up with it. So it can be challenging on, on both sides of it, right? Knowing that they're effective and then keeping up with that. And so GDNT itself is a very robust way to do it. So uh, there's a lot to do with geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, whether you're doing it in 3D or in 2D. It's incredibly robust and it gives so much information, uh, but it, you know, it can be a little bit, um, because it's so robust, could be a little bit uh, confusing to add and, and to understand. And people have trouble with the complexity. You have to learn how to use it. It's incredibly useful once you know that you're um, putting the details in correctly, but to learn how to do that, right? And then to keep up with the standards. Because if it's not correct and complete, it's just like any other documentation. If you give someone a model and it doesn't have the latest update or it doesn't have a certain view with a certain dimension on it, right? It, it's not super useful. So if it's incomplete or if it's not correct, then you run into problems. So new to Creo Parametric 4, the whole user interface for model-based definition and geometric dimensioning and tolerancing has been completely revamped, right? We, we redid a lot of the work that we have in Creo Parametric to make it easier to use, to make it easier to understand, and to have tools to show you how to get your enterprise up and running a model-based definition and geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. You know, it's often a switch that people have to make, that companies have to make. And so we wanted Creo to take those challenges into account and uh, really help address some of those problems. So talking about Creo, uh, and so again, if you're familiar with this previous to Creo 4, you might wanna take another look because there's been a lot of enhancements but we have datum features and symbols. So, you know, you move left to right through the toolbars, you have all the symbols that you're gonna need in a library there. Uh, and if something's wrong, Creo will actually keep track of these details as a feature. So if you put a symbol in that it, it's not possible for that symbol to be there, it doesn't make any sense, right? Creo will tell you. So it does keep an eye out to make sure that there's not something that you're putting in that completely contradicts. So. Um, we also have datum target enhancements. You have the ability, whether it's for uh, industry standards or for company standards, to have these show up uh, however you'd like, right? So you have the straight leaders, the uh, um, no leader, near side, far side, uh, all these different options inside, outside, a whole toolbar just for these different uh, target enhancements. So it's very easy to tell what's going on. We also have geometric uh Tolerancing enhancements. So again, we have uh, the ability to put in all that information and have Creo tell you if it's out of date or if it's wrong, and then also be able to keep track of what's supposed to be in there. So Creo actually will walk you through it a little bit. Um, so again, a lot of the standards and preferences that you need to be able to meet are all here in Creo. We also have annotation enhancements. So the, all of this model-based definition and geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, it all comes under the heading of annotation enhancements. And that's why we talk about them together. So now because they're treated as features, because annotations are, are monitored like Creo treats a feature, you have a notifications list, a notification center. If you have a, a tolerance called out on a particular surface or a particular diameter, 
and that goes away or it changes, it'll give you an error message just like any other feature. It just like if you're modeling and you delete a surface that something referenced, it says, hey, now you have a problem. You know, same thing for these details so that you know everything's up to date because it's associative and it's pulling you know, information right from the model. So if dimensions are changed, they're changed in the detail. And also if something is, um, you know, if, if something is an error, it will let you know. So it, it calls that out for you. We also have combination state enhancements, and these are really, really useful for these through model-based definition. And, and so I like to think of it, you know, when you have a 2D drawing and you have all the different orientations and views that you have different, um, you know, different dimensions called out on different ones, but they're hard to see and maybe use hashes and, and different shading techniques. But in 3D, it's so much easier to understand. So you can see an example, for example, here, these two pieces, right? This is the same piece, but out here, it's solid view. And, and you're calling out surfaces. You can change colors in a combination state that is not changed in your the rest of your, your working model. So basically, combination states are little snapshots that you can take of the orientation, so you're, what side's facing you, um, of the colors, of the transparency, and of what details are visible. So down here, you can see this is calling out the inside surface. So now if you had a dimension you know, off of this, you would know, okay, I'm not referencing the outside surface because it's transparent, I'm referencing the inside surface. So you can see that example up here, right? You have certain dimensions called out for the outside, and you have certain dimensions caught out from the inside, and you can have your combination state set up so that it immediately draws the user's attention to what exactly you're, you're referencing. You can also click on the, on the annotation and it'll highlight whatever it's referencing. Um, that's another way to do it. Now, when you're gonna send these out, right? Okay, so this is a really robust means of doing it. We get around the problem where it's too much information on one model with these combination states where you can have just like drawings, different views. How does the consumer you know, downstream access this information and see it? Uh, so the first way we have step AP 242. So this allows you to save the model as a step file, including rich content. So there's an option when you go to save it as a step file, if you select step AP 242, there's a checkbox that says uh, with rich content um, or rich details. And that would save the combination, you know, um, transparency type things and the different annotations and call outs that you have all over your model in those different states. We also have Creo View and there's a free version and a paid version, but the free version, you could give this to people on the manufacturing floor, you could give it to suppliers or vendors or partners, and you can send them this file and with Creo View, they can open it. They can click on the different things, spin it around, toggle between different combination states, maybe even look at a bill of materials or a parts list that cross highlights, but they won't be able to make edits. They won't be able to see the details in the CAD model. It is just these views for them. So they can interrogate the model without having access to your CAD, you know, real CAD IP uh, and without being able to change. Now the paid version, uh, I think you, you are able to get, so if they wanted to give annotations back and do markups, I think that's where there's a paid version of Creo View. The last option that we like to suggest, you can print these combination states. So for example, if you have, um, and we'll see in the, in the demo, the combinations show up as tabs at the bottom of your screen. And so when you, when you orient it in the correct position, it's at the right angle, you have the right details up, right annotations are showing, you can print that View. So if you just like you have drawings that have, you know, okay, here's a print of a drawing in one orientation, here's the model in a different orientation, just like you have different um, pages for those, you can have different pages of these combination states. So you can create a documentation, PDF, however it is that you share these, physical printing, if you'd like, you know, paper copy, uh, but you can print these however you'd usually do for passing information along. Just like the 2D drawings, you'll have these 3D combination states where they can just look at it and they won't be able to spin it around or right, if it's a PDF or something, but um, but they're able to look at it and understand what information is there. 
Okay, so talking about GD&T advisor. So GD&T is included in all these annotations, tolerances, definitions. They could be uh, you know, your, your traditional kind, or you could have geometric tolerancing in there as well. Geometric dimensioning and tolerancing is a whole uh, skill set in its own, right? You need to know how to um, apply geometric dimensions and tolerances, and you need to know what they mean. And we found that a lot of times that this isn't really taught in every engineering school, and it can be difficult for a company to get everybody up on running on what GD&T um, you know, needs to be in the model. So we have actually an advisor that helps with the, the training and um, helps with the application of GD&T, especially for new users. So this is a Creo extension that you can purchase. It guides users through the steps. So it's adding an annotation just like you would add it normally. But instead of having all of the options available to you at once for what you want to add in that annotation, it takes you step by step through the required things and it makes suggestions. So you can see the profile of a surface is suggested. Some of these are grayed out because it makes no sense. Um, you get a constraint led state legend so you can see what's left to constrain and what hasn't been constrained yet. It also educates users. So if you have an error or a notification, uh, it will tell you exactly why that's a problem. So what does this mean and why is it a problem? So it helps guide users. And then when there is something that pops up, it tells them, um, you know, gives them a little bit of information about it. So it's educating them as they go. This keeps up with ASCV and ISO standards. Every, um, every time, you know, those are updated, we include the latest ones in Creo. It has seamless integration with Creo Parametric. The advisor shows up just like any application that you would use in your applications toolbar. And then again, it adds an annotation. Once the annotation is added, it doesn't matter how it was put there, whether it was advisor or not. Um, but with the advisor, you can analyze those, you get them in a model tree. Uh, so it's actually your annotation tree, but it looks like it's set up just like a model tree. So you can see what goes into each. Uh, also, if you already have model-based definition annotations, um, from earlier versions before, um, you know, this Creo 4 version, you're able to bring those in uh, and have them converted to the new format. Okay, so I know that was a, a quite a bit of information. Do we have any questions so far? Jeffrey, I don't know if... if um... uh, nothing so far. Um, if everybody's ready to move ahead, we can jump into the demo. Great. Um, okay, so let's jump over to the demonstration. And I got most of those key details right. The PowerPoint covers a lot of the key ideas. Uh, and now we can just see them in action. So uh, everybody, you know, now that we know what to expect from this tool, let's see how they work. So um, this is just a typical model, right? You go up to your annotation tab. This is where model-based definition, and geometric dimensioning, and tolerancing is done. Uh, down at the bottom, you can see these different combination states. You get a little preview. So like I said, combination state, um, it saves the orientation of the model, the color, the transparencies, um, and any annotations that are visible on that view. So when you click on this combination state, you'll see what pops up, flips over to the bottom, and the annotations that you've assigned to this annotation state are popped up. Now to view this and, and change it is very easy. Up in the very top left corner, you'll see under file, it says new and update and has a little camera. So if you want to add or remove an annotation from this, you just add or remove it and then click update and it'll save it however the view is that you have on your screen. So there's no extra programming or anything that goes into adding, you know, an orientation or an annotation to this combination state. You just put it the way you like and hit, you know, snapshot up in the corner. So um, looking at the, the bottom here, we have in our annotations tab, a geometric tolerance option. So you just select the surface or entity that you'd like to tolerance. And you get all these different geometric characteristics. So you can choose to a flatness, you know, what, what makes sense here. You add your tolerance in, uh, in, in these sections, you can add, you know, different options. If you'd like to add a datum to this, you can add a datum reference. So it goes in order. So it knows that the, nothing's been created yet. This is the first one. So it assigns it A. And you can cl click that references and select the surface to say, all right, now if anyone clicks on A, highlight this surface that I'm referencing. You can change how that's displayed. There are other options for display. You can do it, put it on the, the elbow. 
uh, different options for company standards, and you can have those preset as well. So now that that, that geometric tolerance is there, uh, add update, and that will be the new, right? That will now be in that combination state. So click on the next combination state. You see we have a front view and it's kind of angled up a little bit so that we can see some of these more important options. You can add to, you can choose to pull annotations from the definition of the model. So for example, instead of saying dimension from this entity to that entity, you can just click the entity and it will say how it's defined in the model. So if you want this hole, this inner surface, this hole here, you click on show annotations, click on that feature. And then in that little pop-up menu, it says, all right, there are two dimensions driving this feature. There's the diameter and then there's the angle, right? So circles so 360. So you can click on that. Now, of course, that's pull, being pulled from the definition of the model. So all of these will update, um, you know, if that, if that change, if anything in the model changes. So these don't go out of date. If you'd like to add a tolerance, this is just your regular tolerance. You have a plus minus maybe, and you get to edit it right here. Uh, you can edit in a pop-up as well if you'd like, if you click on it, but <clears throat> uh, it has symbols, right? Adds that symbol in. And if you'd like to add a geometric tolerance to that, you just drag it on to the dimensional tolerance and choose the characteristic, choose the uh, value. And then if this references datum A, because it's perpendicular to datum A, or you put that in. And now if anyone selects that, it, it will highlight what it's referencing. You can add symbols to the end, symbols to the beginning. Just simply click in your um, little text window and you can put things in. Now, this is a, a, position, a positional tolerance here. It says it's invalid. So you'll notice we get an error and that's saying that you know this is not applicable to the feature that you've added that, that you're trying to tolerance. So it does try to help you out where it can and say, hey, this really doesn't make any sense. This is impossible. When you add the next datum, right, select reference, what's datum B going to be? It's going to be that inner surface of the whole. Um, and so now those are referenced. So pretty straightforward, right? You can show annotations, for example, a, a pattern or a series of features. So you get this, you know, little 0.2 diameter and you pull that from the driving dimension from the model. And when you go to apply the tolerances, you can add how many decimal points that you'd like. You can add prefix and suffix. If you'd like to add a prefix, you can say four times. So this is occurring four times in the model. Uh, and then the really great thing, so you, you put that geometric characteristic on it. So it's going to be, this one's going to be positional. Change that. It always has the last definition that you've used here. So if you want to repeat a bunch of definitions that are going to be the same tolerance, it always have that there. And then if you want to change it, so you don't have to type it in each time if, if it's not needed. Um, you can add additional text here as well. So it's pretty straightforward. Do you want it under the item? It shows you the item and then gives you an option right, left, right, top, bottom. So if you write this in the bottom box, it'll show up underneath of it. And then for the references, it's really great because this is occurring four times, you can select all four. So now if you click on this geometric or this dimensional tolerance, if you, if you select on that annotation, it'll highlight all those instances that it's referencing. And that's one of the really great things about these 3D models is you can put this kind of information in and cross highlighting and you know, moving it around if you can't tell. Uh, for example, if you can't tell what something's referencing, you just move it around, zoom in. So here's another combination state. Now this one has, uh, you know, this one has annotations in a couple of different planes. You'll notice that one's in, um, you know, a different plane from the rest of them. This is up to you. However, you want these to be displayed. You put in your text. You put in your symbols, and then you can reorient these at any time. So there are a lot of different ways to do it, which we'll we'll see in a minute. Um, now, we talk about show annotations, which pulls the annotations available to choose from that define the feature. You can also just flat out dimension something. So you could either do entities, you could do surface, you could do points. 
So if you choose select a surface and you choose this outside surface, and for that one, for example, it'll give you that reference dimension. Um, now you can choose arc attachment, right? It identifies that that's what this is. So you can do the maximum and it updates that value. So this is being driven by the model um, because right, if, if that dimension were to change, that measurement were to change, but it's not actually part of the definition of the model that's driving it, it's just a measurement. So you can put reference, right? This isn't being driven, but uh, this is a reference dimension. So a lot of good information that you can include here. And again, because it's in this 3D view and it's colored, uh, it's very easy to understand what's going on. Now we talked about the step, and this is just here, you can save this as step files, that 242 has this option for include annotation. So you can include all sorts of stuff, right? Datums, facets, cable surfaces, but the annotations in the rich content allows you to save everything about how you're seeing the model right now is going to be able to, you know, that is saved in that step 242. So you know, all the way down to, like we said, the orientation of the model, the colors, the zoom, probably, um, I haven't checked on that one, but it's, it's very precise, right? So now if you send this step file to somebody, if you were to send it downstream, uh, or if they have Creo view, you wouldn't even need to save it as a step file. But if you're saying, if you're sending any of this to someone else, they'll be able to view it as a step file, as long as they're um, whatever they're using can, can load in those AP242s, or, you know, if they get download the free version of Creo View, then they will be able to see it as well. Um, so very useful because all this good information that you put in makes it so much easier for them to understand at a glance what's going on because they can see the whole model in 3D. So they, you know, it, it's way easier to, uh, you know, just get, get, get an understanding before that physical part is in front of them which is, is super useful for reducing errors, speeding the, the time to do those downstream top um, tasks. So looking at GD&T Advisor, right? You click into your applications, you open your GD&T Advisor uh, tab from your applications. And what this does is you select whatever feature or surface or entity that you'd like to put a geometric tolerance on, gives it a name, and then it gives you some guidance. So now you'll notice that list of all of those geometric dimensions and tolerances. It's not, it's not like you can choose from all of them. It's saying, hey, circularity doesn't make sense for this surface that you chose. Flatness and profile of a surface are green, which means they're suggested. And flatness has the asterisk, which means that probably the one you want to do first is the suggested constraint. Now there's this yellow field because it's required. So you need to put a tolerance in. It tells you right off the bat that's required. And then it has datum features selected and labeled, which is also a suggestion. Um, and it won't do that every time. So it's, it actually thinks that you know, this is a good place to add a datum feature. So you'll see it pops up in your feature tree uh, and maybe, okay, so do another one. So this has, this is a surface. It gives you uh, this option. So if you wanna, uh, tolerance the dimension, uh, dimensional tolerance, and then choose what you'd like that to be. So perpen perpendicularity, fill in the yellow sections, they're required. So that's gonna be your tolerance and your condition. And it says datum feature B is suggested. So now that one is datum feature B and it formats it for you. You can change that, of course. Once these are applied, they're just like any other annotation, right? So they'll show up when you go to your regular annotation um, tab, right? All these will be there. It's just a matter of how it got there. It's just a matter of, of applying it with guidance versus applying it without any. So for example, here, this whole, if you want to add your, um, oh, and this is a good point too. So this is gd and t Advisor, but you can see here that you can add dimensional tolerances to it. So you can do all of that here in one stop and one, you know, one task, you don't have to do half the tolerance in the, the annotation tab and half the tolerances. Here you can do them all together. Now, if you add a second tolerance to something, so for example, you'll see that the suggestion actually changed. Now there are more that are suggested for the second condition. So 
uh, that's something that's really useful. It's it's smart enough to know, hey, you already did this one. Uh, so like, what's the next best thing after that? You'll see it suggests datum feature C. And you can move those around. <clears throat> so we're just gonna do a couple of more here. Uh, you'll notice your advisor tree over on the side is starting to fill up, right? You, you started to get notifications and, um, and that's really useful, right? So for example, if you add this tolerance here and put that dimensional tolerance, it does not, you'll notice um, that datum feature selection is not checked. So the next label that you would have is label D, but the checkbox isn't checked because you already have something uh, that has a reference um, for those. So, cause this is the second reference. So that reference is datum C and that's good enough because datum C applies to that one as well. Now here, if you'd like to add the entire pattern of holes, you can do that in one stop. So you can add a single hole or a pattern uh, or, or many, many occurrences, you can do that. You'll notice datum feature is not selected because it references C, which is um, suggested. So it put A, B, and C after that tolerance because it suggests A, B, and C. If you didn't want that, not a problem, it's easy to take off, but it's suggesting, it's saying, hey, for this geometric dimension to make sense, um, you should reference these datums. Right? That's the information that you need to know for that positional tolerance to make sense. And then you can add an additional text that says this is in two places. So now the next thing to do is go over some of the, the details, right? So over here, you have a zero value tolerance and it says that's not allowed. And if you click on it, it'll highlight the one that it's talking about. So then right from here, you can edit the dimension. This is the diameter and say, all right, I guess I need a tolerance because that doesn't make sense. So you, you throw in a tolerance there. And now in that advisor tree, it's gone away. Uh, you know, the other notifications over there, if you select, select on one, it'll give you the um, information. Again, it educates users as they go as to why that's popping up, not just saying it's something you need to fix. This show hide constraint state is one of, I think, the most useful thing about the GDNT advisor because you see down at the very bottom left, it says constraint state legend, and it tells you what's fully constrained, what's partially constrained, what's unconstrained. And you have the option for right, constrained by a surface profile in note, which uh, great, that's a great option for a lot of situations. So you can add a general note, a general profile, and the note can be the general profile tolerance. And it pops up at the top. So you can see here, now everything that wasn't constrained shows up in blue because that's uh, what you added. So you added a general tolerance. You've also added that sheet metal stock thickness, which you've put that note on uh, and then you can start moving things around. So these combination states, if you wanna send them to someone uh, as a 3D model, send them the 3D step file or, or send it to them to use in Creo view. Uh, it's still nice to have those combination states with the annotations facing the right way so that you only need to rotate it around you know, to get an idea of what's going on, but you can read them all from here, especially if you're gonna print so that's one way that we see a lot of companies moving into model-based definition and geometric intolerancing is that, you know, you give them the 3D model, but you also might print, uh, you know, to a PDF, these views, just like you would a drawing view. Um, and and the, something else that I didn't mention yet, all the annotations that you put in here can be pulled into a traditional 2D drawing. So if you're making a regular manufacturing drawing, uh, of your of your model, you don't have to do either or, and you don't have to duplicate the work. So once you have these tolerances and annotations created in 3D, those will show up when you pull from annotations from the model uh, in your 2D drawing, they will all, all show up. So you'll have to reorient them, but uh, the information's there. You don't have to redo, don't have to redo anything like that. So uh, it really does make for a smooth transition We've tried to account for all of the challenges that we've seen companies uh, encounter when they are transitioning, because 3D is such a, a such a great way to understand the model, especially for someone who's trying to make this part. You know, how hard is it to make a part that you you haven't even seen? And we have these great CAD models now where you can see it just like it's in real life, 
Um, but we need to get that downstream. We need to get that and communicate all the information that we have and, and make it easier for people downstream to use and understand. Um, so let's switch back over to you know, what companies and customers who have, have implemented this, what value have they gotten from it, right? Um, it, it looks great, it's used, but really how does it impact the business and impact the company? So we found that model-based definition and geometric dimensioning, it, it reduces scrap and product failures caused by poor communication. This happens in a lot of different fields. It improves productivity with a richer, more complete environment for users. They're faster and, and quicker at working because they have this image in their head and they have an understanding of what's referencing what. It also helps educate users like that GD&T advisor. You, don't, you might not have to use GD&T advisor forever, right? You, you use it, you make sure that you understand geometric dimensioning and, and tolerancing, and then you can move on right, and, and add annotations down the line, you know, however you like. It also improves quality through validation because it validates if there's anything wrong. So it will notify you and you can also see that, that everything has been dimensioned and toleranced uh, appropriately from that constraint state legend. Um, one other quick thing I'll mention, the combination states are now available in AR design share. So for anyone who's unfamiliar, Creo, every seat of Creo comes with something called AR Design Share. And it's just a little section up in your toolbar for augmented reality. You can publish up to 10 models at a time in the cloud. And it's not your IP, but, you know, your intellectual property. It's just a, a kind of a wrap of the surface of it. And then somebody can download uh, the free um, Creo View um, app for, for a phone or a tablet. And then they'll get an email, right? If you publish your model into AR Design Share, you can share it with people who you are allowed, you know, allowing to view it by sending them an email with a QR code. And you can now see all of these combination states in augmented reality. So when you publish the model to the cloud, it publishes all the combined states, combination states. So all the transparencies, all of the um, colors that you might edit and, and uh, different um, exploded views or something like that. So all of this information, not only can it be used as model-based definition, but it can actually be uh, you know, visualized in real life in, in that additional way as well. So strongly recommend that you look into these different options that you have in Creo. The annotations is something that everybody has with every seat of Creo. So if you have Creo right now, you have the ability to do that model-based definition with the combination states and all of those annotations. But the only thing that would be paid for that we went over today is that um, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing advisor. Uh, so hopefully this was useful. And uh, please, if you have any questions, let us know. Jeffrey, I can pass it back over to you. All right, thank you, Emily. Yeah, great point at the end there that that some of this functionality is included with every seat of Creo. That was something I wanted to bring to your attention before we uh, wrapped up today. So thanks for pointing that out. Um, any questions or comments from any of the attendees? I'll give it a couple seconds here in case somebody's typing something up. Okay, I don't see any questions just yet. Um, I've just added our contact information to the screen here. So if you wanna jot this down, if you do have any follow-up questions um, following the webinar here today, you can contact us. You can also reach out to your account executive. Um, okay, we did have one question. Can this be watched again? Yes, we recorded the session today and we'll be distributing it to all registrants. It'll just be a simple YouTube link. So you'll have the ability to share that with other members of your team. Um, if anybody else uh, at your organization might be interested in this presentation or have any follow-up questions, um, you will have the ability to rewatch on demand. So watch for that email coming later today. And uh, yeah, just one final note before we wrap up. If you do have any questions or commentary after the session ends, um, here's our contact info. Feel free to give us a call, drop us an email. Um, otherwise, watch for the recording coming out later today. 
Um, and again, that will be a YouTube link. It'll be completely shareable. It won't be gated or require any sort of login. Um, I want to thank you all for attending and enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Have a great day. Thank you, Emily, and thank you all attendees. Thanks, everyone. Bye.